The title of this video is meant to grab your attention because the present day financial markets have given us numerous concrete and observable reasons to be very concerned about asset prices and more importantly concerned about people's retirement portfolios and net worth. Bear markets destroy wealth. Ignore the dominant trend at your own risk. We're looking at a long-term chart of the S&P 500 index. It's a monthly chart. It goes back to 1997. To set the stage for what becomes relevant over here in the present day and why we're concerned about it and why we believe you should be concerned about it, let's review the basic concepts that will apply to this chart, to these bearish signals, and to all the charts and all the bearish signals that we'll present in this video. The basic concepts, what does a bull market look like? Price is black, tends to stay above this blue line, which is the 10-month exponential moving average. The numbers aren't important. It's the concepts that are important. So a bull market looks like black price over blue. A bear market looks like black price under blue. In a bull market, the shorter exponential moving average, which is the red line, tends to stay above the blue line. So bull market, black above blue, red above blue. Bear market, black below blue, red below blue. Here's the transition from a long-term secular bull market to a bear market. What do we look for in the transition? Several things. The big one is, is the shorter exponential moving average, the red line crosses over the blue line. Notice in the bull market here, every time we got close to it, it held. Right here, it did not hold. That's a bearish signal. That's a sell signal. We got the red line crossing through the blue line. After this point right here, the S&P 500, really after this point, which is similar to where we are today, We've already seen this cross. We've got some white space in between these here. In a similar point, the S&P 500 lost 46%. We got bullish signals, reversals, right here. And then we went into a nice bull market. Here we see the same bearish signals. Price crosses through, tends to stay below the blue line. The red line, the shorter exponential moving average, crosses below the blue line. Here we are here. We've got similar bearish setups today. If you were here and you listened to these signals, you saved yourself participating in a 52% loss. Now to put the gravity of the situation and why you should be taking this situation seriously and why we are taking it seriously, let's just take the average of these two numbers. That comes out to be 49%. If we have a similar drop, that we experienced from this point and this point. A 49% loss from this number here, which is the close for September 2nd, 2011. The S&P 500 closed at roughly 1174. If you lose 49%, that takes you off of this chart. That takes you down to 598 or 600. Now, we understand that sounds outrageous, but if somebody told you from this point in the dot-com era, that the S&P 500 was going to lose 46%, you would have said that sounds outrageous. If somebody would have told you during the housing bubble and the mortgage boom at the end of that period when the S&P 500 was trading between 1400 and 1500 that it was going to fall all the way down to 666, which was the intraday low on March 9th, 2009, you would have said that sounds outrageous. So while dropping to 600 or below 600 on the S&P 500 does. Admittedly, it sounds outrageous right now. It is within the realm of possibility. It's something that we have to respect. In the present day, we're seeing the same sell signals. Notice during the bull market, the red line stayed above the blue line for the most part. We got a scare here. Now we're getting a clear cross of the red underneath the blue price is below the blue and the slopes of these moving averages are rolling over. These are very, very similar setups to what we saw 
here, and here. Many investors are having self-talk along these lines. I've lost too much to do anything now. A good strategy for do-it-yourselfers or advisors is to respect the long-term bearish signals that are shown in this video as long as they remain in place. At a minimum, it is time to have defensive contingency plans in place. The important thing is that you take action now, not next week, not next month. If the market recovers and the bearish signals are cleared, then worst case, you ball up your defensive plans and you toss them in the trash can. We recently have compared bearish conditions in 2011 to similar bearish setups in 1987, 1990, 1998, 2001, and 2007. Today, we will revisit these bearish setups and many others. In order to put today's video in the proper context and so you can make the best decisions possible to protect your wealth, if you haven't seen them already, we suggest that you review the videos from the past three weeks to a month. A good place to start is with this video, Debt Crisis Investing and Risk Management, and then work your way back up to the most recent video. You can find these videos in one simple and easy to access place by simply going to Google and Googling Shivako Capital Channel. Find the link that says Shivako Capital Channel on YouTube, click on it, and then to access all the videos in the right hand margin, click on See All. This chart is covered in detail in a previous video. The takeaways today are simple. This is a market that should not have been sold, should not have been sold, should not have been sold. There's nothing on the present day chart as of September 2nd, 2011, that looks like these markets. This still looks bearish. The slope of the 200 day is rolling over. The slope of the 50 is negative. We've got a death cross here that in this stage of an economic cycle and bull market, a death cross is important. Death crosses in other instances may not be important. The takeaway here for all we need today is this still looks bearish. In terms of what to look for, for bullish signals, that's covered in previous videos. Here's another set of charts that we have presented in previous videos. This is an update as of the close on September 2nd. We still believe that the present day market looks more like 2001, a market that should have been sold, and 2007, a market that should have been sold. It doesn't look a lot like a 1990, a market that should have been held. Some things we want to emphasize, this whole analysis is probabilistic in nature, which means, is it in the realm of possibility that stocks right themselves and go on to make new highs and we remain in a bull market? Absolutely, positively, yes, it's in the realm of possibility. The odds are against that. The odds right now favor lower lows in stocks, which means below this low. Something we always want to emphasize, bear markets have sharp counter trend rallies. This is a sharp rally, sharp rally, sharp rally. Unfortunately, what that serves to do is it keeps people in the bear market. You're really nervous here, you get a rally, you decide to stay. Takeaway here, nothing has changed that makes this chart in the present day look bullish. We'll see what the new trading week brings next week and we will still keep an open mind about bullish outcomes especially if we see some bullish developments what would we do if the s p 500 dropped 50 percent if you or your advisor cannot quickly and without hesitation answer that question you may be exposing your net worth to unnecessary and significant risks do the bulls have some reason to hope yes they do what we're going to be watching in the short term to determine whether this thing is slanting more in a bearish manner or potentially in a bullish manner is this slope of the 200-day moving average. We know the math on this. You can look it up. Here are the numbers that are going to be dropping off on the 200-day moving average as we move forward. The takeaway for clients and those of you watching this video, in the next month, 
as long as the S&P 500 stays below these basic levels, so roughly 1222, the bias will be for this to roll over, which is bearish. In the next month, if we can break above these levels, that gives us some bearish pause and mathematically gives this a chance to turn back up. If this 200-day turns back up, that gives the, the bulls a chance and does give us a chance to potentially go on and exceed this high. From what we know right now, that's not likely, but this is just something that we'll be watching. I haven't even looked at my statement. Self-talk along these lines is another red flag. When you're making decisions in the financial markets, you never want to make a decision based upon one parameter or one fundamental piece of information. So let's look at some other parameters. These are Bollinger Bands for the S&P 500 index. This is a monthly chart going back to 1996. You don't need to know anything about Bollinger Bands to understand what we're looking at here. The concept's very easy. When price, the S&P 500, on a monthly basis stays above the center line, it held here, when you're above the center line, the bias is for bullish outcomes. When you cross below the center line on a monthly basis, so we'd like to see this hold till the end of September for it to be more valid. Once you go below here, the bias is down. Cross over here, bias is up. Cross over here, bias is down. We have a cross now for the second time. We went below it in August. We bounced back above it during the recent rally and now we've moved back below it. This is bearish. When we cross this line here at the top of the dot-com peak, from right here to right here, there was a 46% loss. From here to here, 55% loss. The other takeaway is when we crossed here, we went down to this lower blue band. When we crossed here, we went down to the lower blue band. We just crossed. If we go down to this lower blue band, here's your figure, 0, 1, 0, 0, 6 on the S&P 500. So down here, around 1,000. This signal becomes more valid if it actually holds into the month of September. Now we're going to review some charts that we've reviewed in the past. We're going to go through them fast. We're going to do the same thing in every market, every country, every sector. What we're going to do is this. We've got this bearish cross here. In this case, the blue under the red is bearish. We look at a similar point, which would be roughly here in this market. Last time we got the strongest signal. Last time we got the signal roughly in here, we lost 56% from here to here. So all of these numbers on the charts that follow are from a similar point. They're not from the peak to the trough. Small cap index, still bearish. I have no money in the United States. That's a dangerous stance, given what we know today. Emerging Markets Index, when this moving average rolled over, bearish. We've got a similar rollover here. Here, 57% loss. Our friends to the north of the border, Moving average slope rolled over here, resulted in a 52% loss. We still have a similar bearish signal in the present day, September 2nd, 2011. I own dividend stocks. The video, Debt Crisis Investing and Risk Management, shows how dividend stocks like Procter & Gamble fared in the last bear market. Not well. The DVY ETF dividend stocks slope rolled over here resulted in a 54% loss. We've got a similar situation that's still on the chart. I'm in mutual funds. They'll sell if needed. Check the performance of your mutual fund in 2008. You may change your mind. Most mutual funds stay close to fully invested even in bear markets. Transportation index, blue under the red, from this point to this point, 58% loss. We still have the blue under the red, which is sending long-term bearish signals. If your self-talk is along these lines, we suggest you ask your advisor to develop a defensive, just-in-case contingency plan.
or find another advisor. Basic materials, when this slope rolled over here, lost 59% following the rollover. We've got a similar rollover in early September 2011. Let's close with a long-term monthly chart of the S&P 500 going back to 1996. These are parallel trend lines drawn in these areas. Some other trend lines. Notice the trend from the 2009 lows has been broken. A few takeaways here. Counter trend rallies are always part of trends. Counter trend, counter trend here, counter trend, counter trend, counter trend, counter trend. No matter what happens, if we do indeed go down this way, and that's what the odds are saying, we will get counter trend rallies, and they will be sharp, and they will make you think that everything's fine and give you the impetus to do nothing. And that's not what we want here. There's a lot of white space here. White space is bad. It has a tendency to get filled. Using just this chart and this trend line here, logically, you've got some clustering in here, some clustering out here and here. Logically, if we were to go down that far, somewhere around 1080-ish, 1100, would be a logical place to get potentially a serious bounce. All of these charts, including this one, are bearish until proven otherwise. And how long that takes to be proven otherwise remains to be seen. It could be this week. It could be in three years. The important thing is to keep an open mind and as long as the charts stay bearish, you remain bearish. If they turn, you have to be willing to turn with the market and with the charts. If the answer to this question is no, develop one. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or offer to buy or sell any security or any related financial instruments, nor should any of the content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.